All right, Lakeland, I'm, I'm, I'm happy again. This is, we've had a string now of teachers, hopefully you, you, you actually show this in the, in the order that we're recording it. We've now had a string of teachers of the year. We've gone from Mr. White to Mr. Placenti to now, one of, unequivocally, one of my favorite science teachers, Ms. Ziegler. Former teacher of the year, former county teacher of the year, Miss Ziegler. I gotta correct that. I will always be the sixteen seventeen Pasay County Teacher of the Year. She will always be sixteen seventeen Pasay County Teacher of the Year, and she told me, Mr. Novak, I want to do this in one take, so we're gonna get after it right now. Miss Ziegler, first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for for coming on camera and talking about your new class next year. What is your class next year? What is the actual course that you're offering? Well, right now the working title is Experiencing Education a teacher apprenticeship program. And this is an innovative curriculum-based program that's a college level course. It's providing a realistic exposure to a career awareness in education and to the public education dilemmas in the current field of education. It is designed to attract uh, interested high school students mm -hmm. to the field of education. Uh, looking to provide insight into the nature of teaching, the problems of schooling, and the critical issues affecting the quality of education in America's schools. It is open to seniors with an interest in education. So uh, I'm fortunate enough to be in a position where I actually adjunct in the teacher ed program at Ramapo College. It's a cheap plug to the teacher ed program at <laughs> Ramapo College. You can take my class next year, mm -hmm. two years from now, if you're a senior, social context of education at Ramapo. Um, but one of the common refrains that I always get, because I, I teach kind of sort of the same course, one of the common refrains that I get from my college students is, I wish I would have had a class like this in high school so I would have had an early experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think that that's great. What are some of the things that you're going to be learning about and doing in class? We're going to be looking at philosophy behind teaching, methods of teaching, um, how do you go about managing classrooms, what do you decide you're going to teach, how are you going to decide to teach it, uh, going from kindergarten through high school, yeah. but it might be a little tough to place students in the high school since they would be working with peers. So this would actually incorporate a um, an internship program, so I'm hoping to be able to interface it, interface it with Mr. Kelly yeah. in the senior options. And I know we have we have a, a current number of students who are who are right now placed in elementary and middle schools. Correct. So uh, we already have kind of the groundwork there. Um, I, 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 th I think this class is remarkable for a few reasons. Number one, I know how passionate you are about education and, <laughs> and, and teaching and learning. I, I, mm -hmm. that, that's infectious. And anybody who sees you and understands how you're able to incorporate mindfulness into the classroom knows how much care you have for your students. And, and I just had a conversation before, I forget with whom, um, it might have been Mr. White, where we were talking about how important it is to have a love of what you do in the content. And that is a number one, the most important thing that we can have as a teacher because that is infectious to our students. But another cool thing about your class, I feel, is how it opens up kind of like the fourth wall, so to speak, to students to see everything that goes on behind the curtain in education because there's a lot of work that goes into it. Right. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of philosophy that goes into it. But taking this class, I think, will end up giving you a practical idea of what it's like to go into education. Yes, absolutely from how teaching is done well and not so well, sure. to hands-on experiences, to classroom experiences. Um, we're also, this course would be an entry-level education major first year course at Keene University. So there's a dual enrollment component to it. Dual enrollment component um, that you would be getting your first course of education under your belt now, we, uh, we can probably just go to camera two now. All right, we're, we're pretty close to getting this done in one take, Ms. Siegler. So, um, one of the things that I want to ask you, just as we, as we kind of finish, what are some of the things that you're going to be doing in class? But a lot of it is looking at um, psychology of learning, what you're expecting with your students, where they would be, at what level, um, also incorporating effective teaching techniques, um, also learning how to deal with 
a lot of the paperwork that's involved, forms that need to be filled out, observation yeah. sheets that need to be done. The, the ability to actually formulate a mini lesson, though, is that something yes. you're going to incorporate in class? Yes. So that's cool. I yes. mean, even if, obviously, this is a class that's tailored to those people who want to get involved in education. But even if you're, con listen, if you're on the fence, this is the class to take. If you think, ah, I think I might want to be involved in education, but I don't know, you have the ability now to make that decision when you're a senior in high school, which is unique. Or at and least to experience absolutely. what it might be like. And to, to be able to be in front of a group of people to, to present a lesson is one of the best things you could possibly do because I'm going to tell you right now, as somebody who is responsible for hiring people, interpersonal and intrapersonal skills are so important. Uh, Ms. Ziegler, just 10 seconds. I'm an undecided junior. I'm going to be a senior next year. I think I want to be involved in education. Why should I take your course? You'll have an opportunity to look at what it is like to be a teacher. Personally, I was a senior in college as an early elementary education major, and I found out that it was not a good fit for me. Yeah. I didn't find out that high school was a good fit until mm, my mid-30s. And so this way, it would give you an opportunity to have that experience in education um, but also to be able to gain some experience at a college level and just to maybe enter a field that's probably the best field ever. I agree. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Siegler, thank you for being here. Mr. Novak, thank you for having me. Looking forward to having students in class next year. It'll be fun. Juniors, you're going to be seniors next year. This course Talk to your school counselor, sign up for it, think about it. Thanks again. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here I am with the one and only uh, Mr. John Lauder. It's, it's weird to be on this side of the camera, huh? It is. It's not, I haven't done it in a while. So breaking down the fourth wall, just so everybody That's knows, right. we've been recording for the past few days. Uh, Mr. Lauder has been the one behind the cameras, behind the scenes, and now he's in front of the camera, Today in front of the sweet. scenes. You, you, these are hot lights, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm sweating already. Literally and figuratively, let's get down to business. Let's do it. So you obviously have a class uh, that's going to run next year. That's the reason that, you, that you're on the stage. Um, what class are you offering next year? Uh, so it's broadcast journalism. Uh, I'm really excited to uh, have an opportunity to share some of my experiences. I've done broadcasting in the past uh, in news, sports, and business. Um, I'm hoping that the class that Ms. Spolstra is, is working on, the journalism classes, will sort of be a supplement to that. Awesome, yeah. Um, you know, sort of the broadcast element. Uh, more focusing on audio and radio. There'll be a little bit of TV, but we're going to be in room 505. Um, so we're going to be focusing mostly on uh, podcasting, um, you know, more audio-based recording. We'll do some TV stuff in the studio, but more of the audio side of it. And also just sort of a overall overarching look at how journalism and how social media and how everything in 2019, 2020, how media is affecting our daily lives and sort of how journalism works itself into that. Obviously, we're in an interesting climate now with the media. Yeah, very much so. Uh, and just sort of how that influences business, politics, sports, entertainment, sort of the whole sphere. So can, before we continue to kind of get that down the road into the nitty gritty, talk about prerequisites. It's open to whom? So anybody that's taken video one or beyond. Okay. Um, it's good to have a, just a basic sort of media background. Again, we're not going to do all the same things, uh, but you'll have had audio editing experience, video editing experience, and just experience with the technology and the equipment that we're going to be using. We'll be using some new pieces of equipment, but um, anybody that's had that video one experience uh, will be kind of in a good place to, to take this course. So you talked about some of your background and in, in, in some things you've done in, in, in the real world, so to speak. You want to give everybody, because I, I'm very well aware of it, but do you want to give everybody sure. a, kind of a rundown of things that you've done? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've worked for the NBA, uh, for Major League Baseball, Wall Street Journal, uh, Bloomberg Radio, uh, Fox. So I've been a lot of different places. I've seen a, a lot of how these media companies run, how they operate, sort of their moral compass, their financial compass, their yeah. overall business sort of thought process. So I'm going to try to bring some of that in, into the class as well. And I also want to have the students also think sort of a, themselves on how they'd want to uh, not necessarily run a, a journalism company, but how they would, you know, make tough decisions, um, you know, commercial-wise, slant-wise. Um, I mean, obviously, political leanings and 
um, you know, sort of the way that media companies run themselves is a huge impact on what we watch, what we see, how I mean, we visualize They control things. the message for all intents and purposes. 100%, 100%. And it's basically six or seven big companies that control that message. So we're going to talk about that as well, talk about how they think the media operates, how they see it themselves, because as I'm sure you see, and we've all seen, you know, our phones, the way we, uh, the way we perceive the world has changed so much since I was here at Lakeland. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, so how, you know, sort of gotcha journalism, phone journalism, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, we're going to talk about all those things and yeah. how they impact the media space in 2019. So now, now, now we kind of talked about the content stuff. So chat me up. What are, I, I know it's early. What are some of the things that you're actually going to be doing in class? So a big part of it for me is going to be storytelling, okay? Uh, it's going to be a great sort of jumping off point from English classes if you've taken the journalism class already with uh, Ms. Bolstra. Um, so telling stories through audio, through pictures, through description. So we'll be taking um, specific audio and video stories. We'll be cutting them up. We'll be using certain pieces of these interviews. And the students are going to have the ability to tell a story through their lens, through their voice. Cool. Um, and that's going to be a big component of it. Uh, again, studying how current events are through different lenses, how Fox is covering it, how CNN's covering it, how MSNBC is covering it, et cetera. Um, so it's going to be a lot of back and forth. And it's going to be, again, just like how I approach the video classes, it's student run. I'm, I'm there to guide, to advise. But you know, the, the, the nuts and bolts, the nitty gritty is what the students are going to put into it. That's how I think the best media is created. So because we are desperately out of time, let's now go back to camera two. We can, we're camera two. We're all good now. There it is. All right, see? <laughs> well, well, you don't even need to be here. I know. Uh, I know. Yeah, we, we definitely need you. So give me uh, your 25-second your plug or less. I'm a sophomore. I've taken video one. Why should I take this class? Anybody that has an interest in the media in any way, I think we'll want to take this course. Even podcasting with yeah. the, with the, with the advent of pod, I, I have to tell you, this is this is my everybody I believe has a guilty pleasure. My guilty pleasure, I'm embarrassed to say this, is professional wrestling. I'm a there huge, huge as ne we call it in the business. I'm a mark. I'm a huge professional wrestling fan. I listen to multiple wrestling podcasts during the week, and again, I know it's fake. I understand, but it's like any other sort of dramatic TV show. But th there are people who are wrestling journalists, so to speak who create their own content through podcasts. It's one of the coolest things about this class is you have the ability now to create your own content. And working with somebody who's actually created his own content before, I think, is invaluable. The fact is, anybody that has a phone can create their content. Yep. The phone is an audio recorder, a video camera, a photo camera. It's everything. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to give students the tools to be able to create their own content, make their voice heard, and make it heard around the world. And I think that's a cool thing. Coming to you live from uh, from WWE Studios in Stanford, Connecticut. No, I'm just kidding. Coming to you live you from... You wish. Uh, I, no, I wish. I wish. That's my dream <laughs> job. I just I don't have the physical appearance for it. Uh, Mr. Laura, thank you very much, man. Thank you for having me. Well, well thank you for having me, I really. Guess, yeah, I should be thanking... You should be thanking me for having you. Whatever. Something like that. Look for it uh, uh, broadcasting next year. It's going to be a great class. Well, everybody, there you have it. We are, uh, we are done with our, our fifth or sixth or fourth annual curriculum show. Uh, just some dates that I want everybody to be mindful of. Again, we want everybody to be mindful again. Uh, February 21st and 22nd, juniors, you will be scheduling with your school counselors. Sophomores, you will be scheduling on February 25th and 26th. And freshmen, you will be scheduling on the 27th and 28th. Consider taking some of these new classes, some of the existing classes. We really have uh, a great elective uh, program to offer everybody and we encourage everybody to get involved as possible at Lakeland one of the reasons that we are so great um, not just our passionate educational staff here our teachers but also our students as well so thank you for tuning in we appreciate it until next year Lakeland I'll see you